So the topic today is enhancing cloud security with a zero, uh, zero trust approach. We're going to talk a little bit about some statistics that we, we've seen through a recent survey. And then we'll talk through some customer use cases as well as the architecture of our platform and how you can leverage it to build zero trust for, for your network and build out additional security for the customers that you serve. Um, again, my name is Justin Ryle. I'm our Senior Director of Alliances for Perimeter 81. Just a little bit of background on the company. Uh, we were founded in 2018. As mentioned, we're in the startup pavilion over here. We're booth number nine. Uh, we're an Israeli-based company, so the primary team is in Tel Aviv. We've got about uh, 250 employees. Uh, the R&D team, product to get in Tel Aviv, and then we've got North American resources in New York as well as LA, and that's primarily go-to-market, so marketing and sales resources in those offices. Uh, our founders, Ahmed Braquet and Sagi Gadali, really founded the company with a vision of, of solving a problem of moving um, the perimeter, right? We, we know where users are accessing resources today. They're distributed. Uh, things aren't static. Um, and they looked at the edge and understood that uh, as resources are distributed, again, how do we address that? And how do we create a, a seamless approach with great granular controls in order to sort of manage and build out network and security for our customers? So to kick things off, I'd like to go through, again, a survey that we delivered uh, several months back. We're very much a, a data-driven company. So a lot of organizations will talk about product-led growth. We, we truly take that to heart. We look at our users, whether that's their interactions with our customer service team, um, if that's interactions in the product itself and some of the data that we're seeing. And, and we collate that, and we're constantly you know, refining our roadmap and building the product to fit the needs of our users. But as we were looking to do a, some, some rebranding exercises and really solidify our roadmap for the next two to three years out, we decided to uh, take a step back and run a, a vast survey uh, across a number of organizations. So there was 40 questions in this survey, just to give you a little bit of context. It, it ranged various topics from, from work practices that we're seeing today in terms of the new post-COVID environment uh, cyber attacks, what, what were the users that were surveyed, what are they seeing in their environments, IT needs, and, and much more. So there were a lot of questions. It was targeted primarily at IT managers, um, admins, CISOs, and uh, organizations were a, a, like a very broad range of, uh, of users, so anywhere from 50 users and up. It was not vertically focused, so we received answers from companies that were in manufacturing, healthcare, software, retail, um, really all over the map. And it, it, was, it was really great to see the results. We had 600 completed surveys, so that's 600 individual organizations that fully completed the survey. Uh, and then there were several surveys that came through that were not fully completed, but still gave us some really good data points. So a couple lessons that we learned from this survey. One is that I, I don't think it's a shocker, right? Uh, remote work is here to stay. Uh, when, we, when we surveyed these users, 87% uh, you know, very quickly said that their employees will continue to work remotely or at least in a hybrid form uh, post-COVID. And I'm sure if I were to ask for a raise of hands, which I won't do, many of you and your organizations are probably in very much the, the same boat. Uh, a lot of top drivers for, for hybrid and remote work, but you know, when we look at it, there's, there's massive value for both the employee in terms of the work-life balance, what they get to experience. I personally have been remote for over eight years. I've got young children. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing in terms of not having to commute. Uh, a lot of benefits to it, a lot of downsides as well in terms of not having that day-to-day -day collaboration with your peers and your colleagues to um, ideate on things and, and to iterate. Uh, but generally speaking, it's a, it, it's a good for both the, the employee and the organization. Um, it's not on the graph here, but when we actually looked at uh, organizations that were just hybrid, uh, e even those organizations, they, they basically came in as roughly 50% of those employees were still going to be home one to two, or in the office one to two days a week. So still the vast majority are, are working remote. And hopefully this starts to build a little bit of a picture um, in terms of how this impacts zero trust. Second lesson we learned, uh, no shocker here either, is that cyber, cyber attacks are, are not just news stories. 66% um, of the companies that we 
interviewed and that the, the returned uh, results in the survey had suffered some form of attack, whether that was a full out ransomware experience, um, potentially it was you know, just the individual phishing, some of their users were being phished uh, over email, um, many different variations of those. 87% uh, of those that uh, experienced a ransomware attack reported that to the authorities, and, and of that, 59% uh, paid, paid the ransom as well, and we know that often paying the ransom is much cheaper than the alternative, so uh, that's not a surprise. Um, may see that change as cyber insurance evolves and as that market uh, changes to pr paint a different picture there. Um, what's most interesting to me, at least in this slide, is, is the, the, bottom, the bottom right here. As I mentioned from the outset, the, the survey went out to organizations with greater than 50 employees. So it's kind of a big number. It could be anywhere from 50 to a very, very large enterprise. But uh, you know, when you think about the SME market, organizations that are a couple hundred users, maybe 250 users or below, if they experience an attack that is going to cost them a ransom of anywhere, from, say, 100 to, to 499,000, as we saw there, which is you know, a pretty good percentage, 29% uh, of those attacks, that could be detrimental to the business. That could mean doors closed. Um, that's, that's, that's a massive impact to a, a company, even if they are financially uh, secure. Um, massive impact. So something to think of in terms of, again, users are remote, attacks are continuing, and then you know, the network attack surface is, is growing as well. When we paint the pictures of users being remote, right? They're, they're accessing resources, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's behind the firewall, and they're still accessing through the corporate network. Uh, you know, they're doing that many different ways. They're accessing with their, you know, you're accessing with your phone, potentially through a VPN, on your own personal device uh, back, back into the resources uh, or corporate device, right? So there's a lot of variations here. I, and not only are users accessing resources from different means, but resources are becoming more and more distributed. Um, obviously, you know, apps that we see around uh, email and, and, and very broad reaching apps, most of those have already moved to the cloud. And some of the more legacy applications are homegrown you know, would be the ones that would see more on-premise. On um, interesting stat just here is the, that left pie chart is that little sliver between the yellow and the royal blue is about 1% of those that we interviewed have a fully on-prem environment, meaning no, no resources in the cloud. Uh, and then when we look at how that has, has impacted cyber complexity or the, you know, the cybersecurity that these users are facing, it adds up to about 59% uh, in terms of those um, who see significantly more complex uh, impact and also somewhat more complex, so the vast majority. So in summary uh, of the first couple slides, we've seen that hybrid work is here to stay. Um, obviously, cyber attacks are a reality for many, many organizations, including the small and medium enterprise, and the, the attack surface is constantly expanding. Um, now we come into the crux of the problem where Perimeter 81 plays and where we see zero trust is a way to enhance network security and connectivity. Um, about 30% of the companies use more than, than 20 cyber tools. So as they look to address the problem of, I've got all these users, they're remote, they're working from all over, they're accessing resources that are distributed, a lot of times that problem is fixed with adding more tools to it. You know, we see new companies pop up and, and more tools come out to address that issue. Um, companies with 500 to nine, 999 employees, 30% uh, of those use 20 or more tools uh, as, the, as they came back uh, in the survey. And then larger organizations of 1,000 plus use 50% uh, of those use 20 or more tools. So obviously, you think about it, larger organizations, larger budgets, um, more resources, more that adds up to more tools. Um, but awesome, uh, you know, the other piece of this is we saw that, that more is actually less. 71% of the leaders that were interviewed uh, basically said that the different cybersecurity tools that they're often patching together uh, negatively impacts their organization's ability to prevent and detect threats. Um, it, it's just a lot of noise, there's a lot of data coming in, and, and they don't necessarily know how to address that. Uh, so it's it's a... It's a problem, um, and, and its complexity is getting more and more advanced in, in a difficult 
uh, item to address. So this is you know, a very rudimentary architecture of sort of a you know, legacy network in terms of you've got you know, your headquarters with, with a couple maybe branch offices or site offices and then um, a firewall that has uh, those, those controls where maybe you're, you're routing, you're backhauling traffic through the firewall via, via VPN and then those users are accessing those cloud resources, um, distributed resources, wherever they may be. Uh, but this isn't necessarily the, the best approach, right? It's, it's sometimes a bad user experience uh, in terms of connectivity. It, it could uh, create issues in terms of latency, difficult to manage for the admin. So there's, there's a lot of problems with this. Um, this is, you know, we call it legacy. This is still the vast majority of, of what we see. Um, but it's, it's not necessarily addressing the, the issue of this wor remote work with remote resources and, you know, moving from the model of implicit trust where everybody has access to everything to zero trust and how we, how we mitigate risks based on the policies that we build out for those users. So we, we basically said that, you know, the goal of perimeter one is to move the, the perimeter to the people. So when we look at, at zero trust, uh, whether it's um, accessing resources again through a gateway to, to branch resources, headquarter resources, resources that are on a, maybe a VPC uh, that you need to access, uh, it's a journey, not a destination. A lot of companies aren't ready to disrupt their, their firewall implementation today and move everything over to this. So we see a lot of organizations who will um, maybe have a need for a certain portion of their environment if, if more users are working from home and maybe they're accessing distributed resources to move towards this model and it's a more granular approach in terms of growing into it and maturing into this to adopt it for the, the, the broader organization. Um, it's, it's a mindset. It's not necessarily a, uh, you know, our tool or any specific tool. It's, it's, a, it's an evolution of how the network is built and how resources are accessed. So I wanted to share a quick example of uh, a use case customer of ours, Postman. Maybe many of you are familiar with them. Um, they are very much a, a, a mid-sized organization that's uh, cloud first and very agile. And, and they came to Perimeter D1 in 2018 when they had the need to move away from uh, an, an open source VPN solution and create a zero trust uh, connectivity piece for their, their users. Um, one, of the, uh, you know, one of the key aspects of their uh, joining Perimeter 81 and coming on board with us was really the ease of implementation uh, in terms of our product. It's 100% it's SaaS based, so the gateway, um, you know, we manage all of that. There's, there's, no, there's no appliance, no architecture that the customer needs to stand up themselves. Uh, it's agent based. We also have agent lists. So very easy to implement and, and to onboard. And they saw that and moved very quickly and were able to allow their users to transition over to, again, moving from implicit trust to a product uh, such as Perimeter one where it's um, granular access and, and granular controls to, to mitigate risk associated to that access. We've been through this um, you know, somewhat already, but it, it really helped, uh, helped them. We integrated quickly, moved, moved forward in under an hour in terms of implementing the solution, uh, and they grew into it as well where they added more endpoints ultimately to scale up their, their full network infrastructure um, on Perimeter one So uh, this is sort of the, I would say, the, the meat of the presentation. This, this shows um, really the converged network security that we're looking to build out and that many organizations in this new modern workforce are looking to build out as well, right? So when we think about the cyber complexity trap and all of these tools that uh, organizations are onboarding, uh, many of you have maybe heard of SASE, Secure Access Service Edge, coined by Gartner a couple years ago. Uh, you know, we've taken the approach where we're trying to create a platform. We have created a platform that is 100% um, SaaS delivered. It's easy to onboard. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of, um, of blockers in terms of, of bringing it up. And there's, there's multiple solutions in one. So we look at zero trust in terms of that's the baseline of, of building out the network and the user's access and the controls around that. But then there's additional features and functionalities to, to create more security around firewalls as a service, uh, layer three, layer seven, other access points, how we, how we manage the network and, and what's happening on the network. 
as well as secure web gateway and components of that to both look at you know what are what are the users accessing how do we uh, how do we potentially you know block their uh, access to known malicious sites to phishing sites to even if it's categorization to uh, to gambling or whatever it may be, social media during office hours, and then create bypass rules around that as well. Um, obviously, uh, if, if users are leveraging banking, et cetera, we can, we can support that. So in this model, it, it really brings the network together and allows uh, our customers and, and others to build that converged network security, right, where they're accessing potentially um, AWS resources through a site-to-site -site VPN connection. Um, and, and the VPN uh, Perimeter 1 na network. Uh, we also offer inter-region transit gateway peering as an option, as well as um, redundant tunneling and uh, the ability to create high availability for, for the user's environment across the gateway. Um, we support branch offices, headquarters. As I mentioned before, there is an agent on the solution, but you know, once the agent is, uh, is, is there, and we have many different ways to get that on board, many through identity providers that we integrate with today out of box, um, the user, can, the, the admin can then build that out, network out very quickly and seamlessly and uh, create all the policies associated to that network and how they want to manage that, that firewall as a service also. Um, in terms of the organization, again, we're a, we're a newer organization, been around since 2018. Um, we, we're growing quickly. I don't know if I mentioned from the outset, but we've got about 2,500 customers today. Uh, very fast growth. We're seeing most of our growth in, in the mid-market organizations that are adopting um, cloud first. They're agile. Uh, and, and you know, we don't necessarily want you to take uh, you know, my word for it or, or others, but as you see here, um, we are very much involved in the analyst community. And uh, Forrester named us a leader in the, the new wave in 2021. Uh, it, and really where we hang our hat here in terms of this is the, their statement around uh, customer references that they're enthusiastic. You know, we support them very well. We have a, a very rigor, rigorous process in terms of onboarding and making sure it's a seamless solution for our customers. So. Um, it's again, Primity One is intuitive. It's it's modern. It's uh, it's a it's a different approach. This approach is becoming adopted uh, relatively quickly, and we would love to partner with you. And if that's something that you're looking to uh, to move forward with as well. So I ended up a few minutes early, but um, I do appreciate the time. If you're interested in learning more, we're in the startup pavilion in uh, in booth number nine, and we'd be happy to show you a demo, walk you through, and answer more in-depth questions. Um, that you may have, so thanks so much.